the northern part of Colorado, east of the Rockies, lies Weld County. The northern half is largely dry farming wheat country. In the southern part of the county is the LaSalle Gilchrist Early Potato District. All the farms shown in this film are within a five mile radius of LaSalle and all are irrigated with water from the South Platte River and irrigation wells. Greeley, Colorado, about five miles north of LaSalle, is the location of the main bulk plant which serves this area. From a second bulk plant in LaSalle, deliveries are made by truck to neighboring farms for miles around. As every farmer knows, preparation of the seed bed is an important step to ensure a high crop yield. This triple tiller has its own power unit which turns a high speed cylinder equipped with teeth about four inches long. The teeth penetrate the soil to a depth of as much as 12 inches. This operation tears up all vegetation and mixes the fertilizer with the topsoil before plowing. Spring means potato planting in this farm area. While other crops are also grown, early potatoes are the number one crop. This planter carries seed potatoes in the large hopper and commercial fertilizer in the small front hopper. In this way, planting and fertilizing are both accomplished in one operation. However, not all farmers in this area follow this practice. Some men prefer to use the machines just for planting. In these cases, fertilizer is applied later in a side dressing operation. That's the job being done here by Albert Swenson with his Ford tractor. Here's an early start in farming. Melvin Blake's grandson riding a planter on grandfather's farm. This 70-acre field is one of many owned by L.R. Love and Son. They own and farm about 600 acres and grow 200 to 300 acres of potatoes annually. Their average yield runs from 250 to 300 sacks per acre, with each sack holding 100 pounds. That takes a lot of equipment $50,000 worth, six gas and three diesel tractors, five trucks, two pickups, plus passenger cars. This RD7 Caterpillar dwarfs the two men in front of it, L.R. Love's son Noble and Maurice McMahon. Good care and maintenance, such as draining crankcases at proper periods, is standard practice on all the Love's equipment. It saves them both time and money. There's no skimping either on the quality of the products used. Mr. Love is convinced that using only the best of petroleum products, such as mobile oil, is the truest economy. Incidentally, the bystander on the right is the man who photographed this film, Oliver E. Pumphrey. Of course, it's tough to get a horse. This one belongs to noble Love's son, Jack to pose for mobile oil. He'd sooner go for oats. Seriously though, horses haven't gone completely out of style in this area. This is a scratcher to destroy tiny weeds around potato plants. Here's the same job done by a tractor. Besides killing weeds, it also aerates the soil. This rig was set up by Ted Swanson, an XB-17 pilot, Ted cooked up an easy way to cultivate his potatoes. To you, this may be just a beautiful sunrise. But to the pilot of this plane, 
It's the signal to get to work. He's flying over the E.S. Linden farm, dusting an entire field of potatoes to destroy a psyllid that blights the plants. Dusting is always done early in the morning or late in the evening. One reason for this is because the air currents are more quiet at these times so that the mixture isn't blown away. The other is that the dust sticks better to the plants when they are covered with dew. How would you like to play leapfrog like this with trees and power lines? Until the time comes to dig them up, a farmer can't have an accurate idea of how his crop will run. This is the W.H. Ewing farm. Machines of this type are very difficult to lubricate. Mobile grease number two does an outstanding job in protecting them. Here's a fine crop raised on land owned by Joe Pumphrey and farmed by Kenneth Headley. Ken's potatoes on this ground yielded a little over 300 100 pound sacks to the acre. And as for quality, they graded better than 90% number one. Here they are loaded for hauling to the dock where they'll be sorted, washed, and shipped. The modern potato combine shown being used on one of L.R. Love's farms is the latest development in potato harvesting. With this machine, the potatoes are not left on the ground after digging. They travel up an endless belt to a moving platform where vines and clods of dirt are removed. Then the potatoes fall into sacks, which are loaded on a truck that travels alongside the combine at slow speed. The use of machines like these greatly speeds up the harvesting as well as delivery to the shipping point. From the farms, the potatoes come to a dock for shipping to points all over the country. First, they are passed through a washing operation to make inspection easier. Then they are sorted. When the harvest is in full swing, from 50 to 100 truckloads are shipped daily from this one dock, plus as many as 60 carloads that go by rail. Sugar beets also are an important crop around La Salle. This is George McClellan cultivating his plants with a Ford tractor. Beets of this type go a long way toward satisfying the nation's sweet tooth, provide a big part of our sugar supply. Earl Todd cultivates his crop with a Cultivision tractor. Here's a Ford tractor being used for the same work on another beet field. of the year brings the beet harvest. This is the most common method used in pulling beets. The puller merely lifts the beets out of the ground, acting much like a potato digger. Here a small drag is being pulled between two rows to level the ground on which the topped beets will be piled. The beets are topped and piled by hand. 
the loading operation is speeded up by means of a mechanical loader, which fills the truck that hauls the crop away from the fields. These are Stuart Bolter's beets and made 20 tons to the acre. On this loader, a Ford tractor supplies the power. This machine, owned by Mr. Wykant, tops the beet, then pulls it, putting beets in one row and tops in another. A horse-drawn scratcher driven by William Bolter breaks a crust that's kept a field of corn from coming up. And here's the same job being handled by a scratcher on the Ferguson system of a Ford tractor. So you can see they grow a crop of corn too in this Colorado farming area. Girls also farm in these parts. When Miss Rosella Bolander's father was injured, she took over cultivating the corn. And the corn grows tall around La Salle. This crop, grown on the Charles Sylvester farm, is just about as good as anyone could ask for. A fox cutter provides a modern method for harvesting whole corn in the field. Corn is chopped up and blown into a truck which travels alongside the cutter. At the silo, the chopped corn is stored by means of a mechanical conveyor. A tractor operated sweep rake speeds up stacking alfalfa hay. Another way of harvesting alfalfa is with this machine that bales the hay in the field. The bales are piled on a sled behind the machine. The sled is so constructed that the piles can be unloaded intact without stopping. These fox feed cutters, owned by the Northern Colorado Alfalfa Milling Company, are picking up alfalfa in the field. These machines are in operation 24 hours a day and are lubricated completely with mobile grease number two. On this farm, even hay is no longer pitched from a stack into a grinder. This machine is capable of taking hay from the top of a stack as high as 25 feet. It is then pitched from the ground into the feeder of the grinder after being torn loose by the power loader. Cultivating onions indicates another crop grown around La Salle. And here's the fine yield obtained by Roger Reed. It ran better than 400 sacks to the acre. Another fine crop. This time it's a field of beans, here being cut by George Hatch, also an ex-bomber pilot. His son Jimmy acts as foreman from the sideline, but not for long. He joins his uncle Bill, George's brother, on an IHC tractor, pulling a side delivery rake with which the beans are put in a windrow. The Fisher brothers, Jack and Stanley, have two rigs like this.
each one threshes 3,000 bushels of oats a day. The Fisher brothers operate two bundle loaders like this and six bundle trucks with each thresher. They stick to Mobile Lube C for gear protection. Of course, Colorado is noted for fine livestock, and the farming area around La Salle is no exception. These Hereford cows are being fed on the Charles Sylvester Ranch. Elliot owns this herd of registered purebred Jersey dairy cattle. All of the farms shown in this film are irrigated with water from the South Platte River and irrigation wells. The use of siphon tube outlets is one of the newest developments in irrigating extremely sandy soil. They can be set without making a cut in the ditch bank. And they keep operating efficiently. Here's an 80 acre farm that was leveled from one end to the other for better irrigation. D.O. Norris did this job. The entire farm was covered with high spots and low spots before he started. From the size of the cuts he had to make, it's easy to see what an undertaking this was. Yet, Mr. Norris finished it in one week. His M&M crawler pulls an 18-yard Fresno and is diesel-powered. It burns mobile diesel fuel and is lubricated with Delvac motor oil. A Fresno like this offers one of the most difficult jobs of lubrication. Under enormous loads, it runs in dust and dirt and is constantly exposed to heat and water. Mr. Norris finds that mobile lube gives the best protection. He also uses mobile Florex and the hydraulic lifts that operate the Fresno. Seagulls help kill off some insect pests. But liquid spraying with a mixture of lime sulfur and water is needed for psyllids. Some farmers prefer dusting, using the same ingredients. Here's another type of pest killer. It's a weed burner, one of the newest pieces of farm equipment, being operated by L.R. and Noble Love. In this vicinity, Aerial dusting of fence lines and ditch banks is done several times a year in the constant fight against grasshoppers. This plane is covering the hopper havens on the farm of Joe Pumphrey. Aerial dusting is so effective that a 90% kill in 24 hours is not unusual.
And so with this scene of one farm area's fight for crop protection, we close our film on modern power farming. <laughs>